in the last stream, we were working, of course, on setting up the Emmy Quantum Ring. We managed to get all of the required resources to actually make the uh, the two Emmy rings. Uh, one of them we have down in this rather awkward position, but it is down here in the overworld and ready to be connected up to our system. The other one is uh, kind of in our inventory, ready to be set up in the overworld. Now, at the very end of the last stream, we, of course, set up the matter condenser over here with a 64k emmy storage component and as you can see since the end of the last stream cobblestone has been being pumped in cobblestone has been being cobblestone has been pumped in to the math uh, to the matter condenser uh, continuously to the point where we now have five singularities ready to go and uh, honestly we only need the one and uh, we can probably go ahead and take that out now we don't need that uh, in there anymore we can maybe use that to make a, a 64k emmy storage drive at, uh, at some point in the near future for now though all we need to do, chat, is we need to get one Ender Dust, which is this guy right here from Applied Energy 62. Uh, we got this before because we were uh, using it to make the range upgrades, the uh, wireless boosters here for our uh, wireless access point. And you make it by crafting together the Enderpearl Powder, which you get by running the Enderpearl through a sag mill. And once you have one Singularity and one Ender Dust, you then need to blow those up together to form two Quantum Entangled Singularities that you can use to connect two emmy quantum rings together now you could of course do that with regular tnt however applied energy sticks does add this very adorable tiny tnt which is also pretty easy uh, to make and it does the job just as well so i feel like we might as well grab one of those and then uh, if we head on over to uh, a place that's not you know part of our base and we throw down the singularity and the ender dust with the tiny tnt and we turn it on we should hopefully See that turn into two quantum entangled singularities. Nice. So now, chat, all we need to do is we need to place one of these two quantum entangled singularities in this quantum link chamber, like so. And we need to place the other one in another quantum link chamber in, you know, basically wherever we want. Right? You can use this to transfer uh, applied logistics in the same dimension. It doesn't have to be uh, cross-dimensional transfer. You could, for example, uh, put another one down, you know, just 100 blocks over in that direction, it would work just fine, but for us, we're gonna use it to uh, allow us to access and use our applied energy system from the overworld. Before we do that though, we do have to get a couple of things because in order to actually establish a connection between the two rings, both rings have to have power. And so we do need to have power available to the quantum ring in the overworld, which means we are gonna to have to get another energy acceptor. We did make one of these before and uh, we did have one. Unfortunately, I did accidentally delete it using this little trash can here, but uh, thankfully, it's really not too difficult to make, and uh, I guess we'll just use the culinary generator to provide power on the other side. I do also think, chat, that we might have to put down a couple of energy cells, these guys right here, around our applied energistic system, because I think the quantum ring does use a large amount of power, so much so that it might start uh, flickering our system on and off. We'll find out momentarily. For now, though, Let's go ahead and grab some cable. Let's hook this guy up like so. And you'll see, yeah, that instantly the, the, the power did turn off. It is back on again. Does it tell me how much power this is using? It tells me how much power it has in the top left there. 7.74 killer AE is how much power it has in there, uh, which is fine. Like I said, that might start uh, flickering soon. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't get a, a link established over in the, uh, in the other world. And... Honestly, I might as well get another wireless access point, I think. That, at the very least, should allow us to uh, use our wireless crafting terminal over in the overworld. That does also, I guess, nicely lead me on to uh, another thing that I've done between streams chat, and that is finally moved our machines. So we now have all five of our NYO machines down uh, up against this back wall. Uh, I have gone ahead and run the, uh, the conduits over, so they just run uh, under the floor all the way along to here so it is getting power and they're all ready to go and i've also uh, done the same over here with some of our thermal expansion machines as well as uh, with the mechanical squeezer which previously was uh, kind of just sitting outside in, in a bit of an awkward position uh, and so if we come on over here we should be able to uh, drop the flux dust in there get ourselves the uh all the flux crystals in there get the flux dust craft that into a flux pearl and at that point i think we're pretty much good on the wireless access point we are, nice. So let's head through to the overworld and see if we can't set this up. So let's see here, chat. If we go ahead and build another quantum ring, 
and we place inside that quantum ring our other quantum entangled singularity, those should now be connected. And so if we put down the energy acceptor, and I guess we'll do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cable here. I'm going to put the acceptor here. I think the acceptor can uh, kind of do connect directly like that. Uh, but I think the cable also makes it a bit easier because we can then put down our wireless access point like so. And at that point, if we quickly steal the old culinary generator here, and we throw that down right next to the energy acceptor, I'm hopeful that we can establish a, co a connection. Now, it is possible that... This doesn't produce enough power. So we'll throw in the old uh, speed upgrades as well. And hopefully that's going to produce enough power to uh, establish a connection. I will break this temporarily, I think, just to see if that's... Because I that might be using a bit of power as well. But uh, hopefully we, uh, we generate a connection. Now we do have to keep channels in mind as well because the channels do uh, pass through. Okay, that has connected. And uh, once it's connected, it should uh, be able to bring power from... The overworld, you can see we can now access our, our system while we're in here, which is very nice indeed. We are, of course, still bound uh, by the 16 uh, block radius of this uh, wireless access point. But uh, yeah, this should now be good. We shouldn't need to keep the culinary generator here, nor should we have to keep the energy acceptor here. This should just work now by pulling power from the overworld. And speaking of pulling power from the overworld, chat, I did mention a few streams back that I do want to kind of fix our power setup a bit, right? Because right now we're producing, I think, a fair amount of biodiesel, but I think a lot of that biodiesel is being deleted due to the fact that the diesel generator continues to burn biodiesel even when it's full on power. So what I think we should do is a few things. The first thing I think we should do is make a capacitor bank so we can actually store a kind of a buffer of power. Up until now, we've not actually stored power anywhere, and the only places that are storing power are the machines that actually use power, right? So I think we could do with getting at least a capacitor bank, maybe a few capacitor banks to store quite a, a, a good backlog of power. And then from there, I think we should set up a system that turns off the generator when we have like over a certain threshold of power, right? Similar to what we've been doing with our uh, clear, with our sand and with our polymer clear here, where we kind of turn systems off when they get too full. I think we could do the same thing with our, with our diesel generator. If we're going to make a vibrant capacitor bank, which I think we should do, uh, the first tier here, I believe, can only accept 1,000 RF per tick. The second one can accept 5,000, I think. So you could potentially uh, get away with this one for now because we are only producing 4,096 RF per tick. But um, I think a little bit of future proofing would be nice. And so getting the vibrant capacitor bank is uh, probably a good idea. And at that point, we could probably connect up the diesel generator and the nether star generator uh, for power, right? So let's see. Do we have anywhere near what it takes to make this? I think we probably do. We are going to need a lot of capacitors, which means a lot of grains of infinity, which right now we don't have. So, but we can get fairly easily, of course, from the nether. But I am also thinking, Chad, that it might not be a terrible idea to look at automating the productions of grains of infinity. We could do that in the nether on bedrock. We could also craft up a compressed infinity dust block and then use that. Does anybody know if you have to use a flint and steel to get them? Let's give that a try. Let's get a, a bucket and go grab some pyrothium real quick and then see if we can use that to uh, to generate grains of infinity. Because at that point, if we can do that, then uh, we can probably automate it fairly easily, right? The only hard part, I think, about uh, about trying to automate the grains of infinity would be automating the creation of flint and steel if we had to use those. All right. So if that works, chat, which it clearly does, we can, we can work with that to set up a, a fairly efficient grain of infinity setup, right? The only hard part is making sure that there are holes, right? Because you have to have the pyrothium on the same level or like kind of one block down from the, uh, from the bedrock. But thanks to the way the terrain scanner works, we can do that fairly easily, right? I'm essentially thinking I might bring the terrain scanner back and build in this next chunk here. That way, because obviously we could just put it down right here and then that would infinitely light this um, bedrock on fire and that would infinitely get us uh, the stuff that we need. But I think what would be even better and more efficient of course is uh if we manage to get you know bedrock on the other side and in fact even got bedrock you know here and here and then maybe even put down like a few bits of pyrothium to really up the speed at which we're getting the grains of infinity and then we could maybe use like an end chest system to bring those grains of infinity back to the overworld and then uh, you know pipe those into a storage drawer for essentially uh, like infinite grains of infinity right i think that can work out really well for us so uh, let's give that a try let's go grab 
the old terrain scanner, which I think right now is in the overworld. Uh, and now what we can do, chat, is we can get rid of these blocks that we place, and we can fill those in, of course, with pyrothium, right? So let us, I guess, grab some more pyrothium. In fact, do we have a reservoir with pyrothium? We don't, but we can go and get some. Uh, we do have three buckets worth there, and I feel like we might as well uh, empty that out because we're not really going to be using them, I don't think, in any other area. The vacuum chest has a max range of six blocks, which means if we put it in the center, the center being, like, right here, then it's going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to go to, like, right here. It's not going to get these end bits. So I might make two vacuum chests. And then let's also make another two ender chests. Beautiful. And uh, this time we'll go with, let's say blue. Sure. And some diamonds to, uh, to make it private as well. So essentially, all we're going to do once we are over here is we're going to put these down. I guess we'll put them down kind of up here. We'll put one down there, and we'll put the other one down there. And then I'm going to put the end chest in the middle. If I can place it. So right about there. And then all we have to do then is just pump from the vacuum chest over and into that center chest. And at that point, we should be pretty much good to go. It's not crazy fast. You'll see sometimes it is taking a while for the fire to relight. Uh, but the fire does relight eventually. And uh, we are going to want to get a chunk loader down here. And uh, in hindsight, I really should have just built it maybe closer to the uh, to the uh, the setup over there. Although I guess also in, in foresight, we could just move uh, this setup over to here. So we can use the one chunk loader for, uh, for both setups. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and grab some uh, item conduits. And then we'll just do one, two, one. To make sure that's set to extract always active and insert and then extract always active and insert and that should basically just be good to go um, at that point all we're going to do is we're going to head back through uh, to the overworld with of course our, uh, our shulker box the twitch chat has reminded me we do of course have to uh color our uh, our end chest let's go Blue in the middle. And we'll lock it. Uh, the only thing the lock does, by the way, is it just makes it... Um, like, we're on a server. So uh, if I just made, it made mine white, blue, white, it's quite possible somebody else on the server's already done white, blue, white. Uh, putting a diamond on the front locks it to just me so that uh, only my chests that are white, blue, white will connect to each other. That's all the diamond does there. Uh, it's not strictly necessary, but given how many diamonds we have, we might as well. And then, yeah, like I said, I think all we're going to do is we're probably just going to put that into chest. Maybe, like, right here. Because that way we can just get a transfer node. We can just pull directly out of that ender chest down and uh, into that draw slave. And at that point, all we have to do is make sure that we have a storage drawer that is set up and ready to accept the, uh, the grains of infinity. As a precaution, we should definitely make sure that that uh, drawer has a void upgrade in it. Because although it's coming in slowly, eventually we might end up in a situation, uh, especially if it's chunk loaded, where we end up with, uh, with just way too many. So yeah, we have 16 right now. Let's go make a uh, another draw upgrade. Again, I'm going to go with the uh, the diamond one for now, just because we have so many diamonds and they're so easy to make. Not that I think we're going to need, you know, 12,000 grains of infinity, but uh, we might as well. And then we'll also go ahead and make the void upgrade. So long as we have the obsidian for it, which we do. Fantastic. Boom. And that should be it. We should be good to go. We should be able to hook the uh, the pipe up here. And it should just work, I think. All right. So we now have 96 grains of infinity, which is good. And the Twitch chat has pointed out there's a much cheaper recipe uh, down here. And we do even have the electrical seal already. So all we need to do then is make another vibrant crystal uh, which does require another emerald and also requires a bunch of vibrant alloy so i think we do have some energetic alloy we do 
However, we could definitely do with, with more. We're going to need more if we're going to make those uh, octatic capacitors. And so we should probably start by making some more of the uh, energized alloy. So redstone, glowstone, and gold. We'll throw the, all of those into the old uh, alloy smelter here. And we'll even do some more gold generating as well. And uh, while we wait for that to do its thing, we should probably go and purchase some more emeralds, which we can, of course, do via uh, via coal in the old uh, Amadron tablet. Uh, I will fight you in just a minute, good sir. I would first like to get my coal into... I'd like to get my order in before they run out of stock. So uh, just give me as many as you will. 13. Place order. Hello, my friend. All right, 13 should uh, should hold us for a little while, I hope. How are these doing over here? They're doing well. While I wait for this to uh, process more, we can uh, dump the old emeralds for now. One thing I did mention, chat, that I was going to make a, a few streams back and uh, didn't quite get around to making is the uh, Staff of Traveling, which uh, I think we should now be able to, uh, to make fairly easily. It's uh, two Infinity Rods, which are made with uh, Dark Steel Nuggets, Grains of Infinity, and a stick as well as an Ender Crystal, which is that Vibrant Crystal with a an Enderman Soul Vial, which really I don't think is going to be too bad. We do need one Vibrant Crystal in order to uh, to actually make that. But especially now that I've moved these machines, I'm thinking we could invest in quite a few more Travel Anchors, you know, have one, gosh dang it, the freaking Enderman, they're everywhere, and have one that's like right in front of these machines here. And especially once we get the Travel Anchor, that'll make, you know, moving from, you know, machine to machine, area to area, just a lot faster. So uh, let's go and let's make, I guess we'll do 16 of the uh, of the Vibrant Alloy here. The first one, of course, we're going to craft down and use to make ourselves a uh, crystal. We should have some soul vials left from before. We do indeed. And uh, the first Enderman that I see here is going to get uh, sucked up and plopped into the old, uh, the old soul binder. Thank you. And I don't think the rest of it's going to be too difficult. It might take us a minute to make some dark steel if we'd already have some. But other than that, I think we're good to go. So we'll do, once again, we'll take the capacitor. I should really make more capacitors as well, more octatic ones just for the uh, the machine. So I'd have to keep moving these because I do believe that we actually lose power when I do this. Simply due to the fact that the, uh, you know, the sack mill has power in it. When I take the capacitor bank out, it loses that power. And then when I put it back in, it has to regain the power again. So it does take, you'll see right here, power's lost. And then when you put it back in, it, uh, it has to build up again. It's not a huge deal, but it's, uh, you know, it would be a slightly more efficient if we had just a capacitor for each machine as opposed to having to pull it out every single time. Uh, do we have any dark steel nuggets? We do indeed. Fantastic. And kapow, we get a staff of traveling. Nice. Unfortunately, we do only still have the uh, charger from applied energistics as kind of our only way to charge items right now, uh, which unfortunately is not uh, allowed with the uh, staff of traveling. And so it's probably time for us to invest in a, uh, a wired charger. This guy right here, it's not too expensive. It does require a little bit more electrical steel, but electrical steel is really not too expensive at this point in time. It's iron, it is coal, and it is obsidian. In fact, I might go straight in with a wireless charger. It's in fact actually surprisingly like a little cheaper than the wired charger. It does require the, uh, the slice and splice, but given that we have so many Enderman heads, the reason I say the wire charge is more expensive is that it requires a machine chassis, which is not super expensive in all honesty, but is quite a pain to make. And so uh, instead, what we'll do is we'll do coal, silicon, and iron. We'll get that making the uh, electrical steel. But then if we grab an Enderman head and combine that up with some of that silicon and the vibrant alloy, I think, is it redstone? Oh no, it's solarium ingots. We can get the uh, Ender Resonator fairly easily. And then the wireless charger will allow us to actually charge up um, all of our stuff, like the Staff of Traveling, wirelessly. It'll charge it up just in our inventory, which is super nice. And it'll also continue to charge up our wireless access terminal as well. So we don't have to actually keep going back and uh, charging that up in the A2 charger, which is unbearably slow. Instead, we can have it charged up as we, uh, as we wander around, which is uh, very nice indeed. So we'll uh, throw the capacitor in there. That is going to uh, very quickly get us the Ender Resonator, and at that point, we can craft up a regular old basic capacitor, and boom, a wireless charger. Nice. And I guess for now, 
I don't know what the range is on the wireless charger. Chat, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I'll put it down... Maybe like... Maybe underground? Maybe just like right here? For now? It's a bit of an awkward positioning, but we really shouldn't need to... Uh, to be close to it. Yeah, you'll see it's already... Uh, we, we, we don't need to be able to see it. And there we go, it's charged up. Nice. So now you can see that no matter where we are uh, in the base, we can still see all of the uh, the travel anchors. So we can just teleport uh, directly to wherever it is we want to be just by using the uh, the staff of traveling, which is super nice. And I think it also uh, maybe gives you, yeah, the ability to just kind of fly around in general with a shift right click, which is real nice. And uh, so long as you actually have your uh, ring set up correctly, you shouldn't take uh, fall damage because you can like lower yourself nice and slowly. Cool. You can right click it to view the range. Really? Oh, I see. Yeah, look at that. So the range is quite big. It doesn't cover our whole base. And so I guess it might be a better idea. And I might make a second one at some point, but it might be a better idea to have one like kind of like here and then have another one on the opposite side as well to kind of fully encompass the uh, the compound. That way we're always charging. But then again, I think it's unlikely and we can uh, right click again to close that, I guess. But I guess it's unlikely that we're going to go so long not passing through this area that we don't recharge right so i think that's probably probably fine um either way where were we we were making of course the um capacitor bank we've taken a bit of a, a large detour here chat but the capacitor bank shouldn't be too difficult if we're going to make it all we need is another vibrant uh, crystal which does require us to uh, craft down another one of these vibrant ingots but that is fine and then from there it's just four octatic capacitors for that we need eight double A capacitors and therefore 16 regular capacitors. So let's see if we don't have what it takes to make those. We do. And uh, thankfully all the all those gold nuggets we had uh, sitting around in our uh, system are finally coming in useful. At that point we can craft up hopefully 16 of these. Not cool. Oh no, sorry. Eight of these. And then from there we should be able to craft up four of these. And uh, the only thing we're missing there is glowstone. I do have a little bit of glowstone hiding out in here. That's kind of our reserve glowstone. Uh, for now, 16 should be enough because we only need four. Boom. And boom and boom. Nice. And that should be the first vibrant capacitor bank. Nice. So let's go and place this down on top of here. We're going to put it like right there. So now all the power should be going into here before it goes out, you know, into uh, the rest of the base. Uh, and in fact, I'll make sure of that. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. So now only power that is, uh, you know, all of the power should now be going through the, the vibrant capacitor bank into our base, which is good. Now, it would be nice if we had a little bit more in the way of, um, in the way of seeds over here. I do think that these two cloches are kind of useless. I think this system over here with the SNAD and the uh, the mechanical miner are doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to sugarcane uh, to the point where I think we could probably repurpose uh, these two cloches to make more hemp seeds and then just pipe those under to get us more biodiesel. That also might work. But before we do that, let's work on uh, configuring a system to where the diesel generator is turned off once we have um, a certain amount of power, right? Because it does look like, even though we're not producing that much hemp right now, even though we're not producing enough hemp to continually back up on biodiesel, um, we are producing enough power because this number here is slowly going up. So let's go ahead and uh, use everyone's favorite mod, which is, of course, uh, Integrated Dynamics. So Integrated Dynamics, of course, adds the Redstone Writer, which we've used a few times now. We'll make another one of these uh, because they are fairly easy to make. And then from there, we can also make what is known as a machine reader. This guy right here, which allows you to read the properties of a machine. Specifically, it's going to allow us to read how much redstone flux is currently in our capacitor bank. Uh, unfortunately, we do the end stone for that. And right now, our end stone situation is less than ideal. So can we request like 100 end stone? We cannot because the crafting CPU is not available. I assume that is because we already have another craft in progress. But maybe I can do one now. Nope. In that case, then, chat, let's go ahead and uh, grab some of our pre-existing endstone and just chisel it into the type that we need. 
At that point, we can make a chest and hopefully make the reader. Nice. So the idea is that we're going to have the block reader right about there. We're going to have the writer, of course, right about there. That's where you output the redstone signal uh, for the diesel generator. Uh, I'm fairly certain the diesel generator turns off when it receives a redstone signal. Uh, that needs to be, you know, we need to know that for the logic that we're going to configure. We do also need, speaking of logic, some more logic cables. And then we'll hook these two up. And then uh, the only thing we then need is the logic programmer, which is this guy right here. We did make the portable version uh, so we can carry this around with us. And we also, of course, do need uh, some variables as well. So we're going to get our first variable from the reader. You'll see in here, if we scroll down, there are a few options for uh, is the FE buffer full? So is the power buffer full? So we could use this if we wanted to turn the diesel generator off when the generator was full. We can do it if the generator is empty. So we could do it the other way around where we only turn it on when it gets empty. Um, and we could also do it where uh, it's not empty. I think we're going to do it based on the stored FE. So I'm going to get a variable that basically just holds. So this card here, this variable knows how much power is currently in here, how much RF, right? Currently it's 6.5 million, but that number is fluctuating. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll say once, and by say, I mean, we're going to the uh, logic programmer. So we're going to go to integer, and I'm going to get another variable that I'm going to set to uh, 20 million. That's 20 with one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. We're then going to go to less than, and we're going to say that when the amount of redstone flux inside of the capacitor bank is less than 20 million, emit a redstone signal. That's not what we want to do. We want to do it the other way around. We want to do greater than. That's my bad, chat. Greater then so when the amount of redstone flux in the, the uh, capacitor bank is greater than 20 million that's when you're going to trigger and so at that point we do need another another variable storage this guy right here how and i was looking in my system you madman please just let me let me configure in peace so we'll connect up the logic um variable storage we'll put in the two variable cards that hold numbers that being this one that holds the amount of power in the bank and this one here that holds 20 million and then we'll put this one in on the boolean like so because the boolean again means true or false so basically all this is doing is it's checking whether or not the logic that we apply to this is true or false is the number in here greater than 20 million if it is output a redstone signal if it's not don't output a redstone signal so what we should see jet is when this number here gets above 20 million uh, ui which is the same as redstone flux we should see the diesel generator stop working it shouldn't turn on again uh, even if it has enough biodiesel to turn on, it shouldn't turn on until the capacitor bank falls below 20 million. And so by doing that, what we should see is that we never run out of power. And for now, I'm going to leave it like that. I don't think at the moment our base is going to be using more than 4,096 redstone flux per tick. So I think we're okay. In the future, what we could do is we could add to this even further. Because what we could do, for example, is we could put down the nether star generator, like right you know, let's say here, right next to it. And we could set up like another bit of logic that says, uh, if the power falls below 5 million, then turn on the nether star generator, right? That way we could have a system where uh, the main source of power is our diesel generator, because the t that, that power is basically free, right? It's coming from our uh, cloches and our sugar cane. But then if we enter a period where we're using a lot of power, you know, and the, and the diesel generator can't keep up, then we could have the nether star generator kick into gear and uh, kind of supplement that power until we get again back up above say 20 million at which point they both turn off and the system kind of starts over again right that could be a pretty cool and pretty uh, you know useful system to have uh, in the future for now i don't think we necessarily need it because for now we're not really using that much redstone flux uh, but that does take me chat to uh, the whole reason that i built the old quantum ring and that is because we can now use p2p tunnels to transfer power from the overworld through to the uh, from the nether uh, from the end even over through to the overworld through our quantum ring so to do that we need two me p2p tunnels these are fairly easy to make they do require uh, two engineering processes but that is uh, not gonna be too difficult for us to make so i'll put you in there and get some diamonds i think we also do have the uh, silicon required as well we do and i'll grab the redstone while i'm here might as well so diamonds let's go and uh, also i guess move the acceleration cards back over i should really just make three more acceleration cards so i don't have to keep moving these over and over again but for now that is fine let's do you you and you uh, for now we do need two of these like so and essentially 
the way this is going to work, and again, it's going to be a little janky right off the bat, because I think what I'm going to do, and I'll hide this cable in the future, but for now, I'm going to run this cable from the controller down and over to the capacitor bank. We're going to put a P2P tunnel right there. We're then going to run that cable, of course, up uh, to the roof. Like so, and like I say, eventually we can hide these, you know, in the roof and, uh, and make it look a little less horrific. But uh, for now, that's going to get the job done. It's going to be a, a nice proof of concept. There we go. So uh, we're going to put the first one down there. And we're going to put the second one over on the Void All Miner, right? Because right now, the real kind of slowness from our Void All Miner is coming from the fact that as of right now, it's not getting any power because it doesn't have the culinary generator. But even with the culinary generator, it wasn't getting that much power uh, because of the fact that the culinary generator wasn't able to keep up with the uh, requirement of 660 redstone flux per tick, right? So uh, we'll move the weeding gadget. We'll put the other one down right about here. And then we'll try and connect these up. It looks like we are going to need a little bit more cable, but that's fine. In order to actually transfer power from the uh, end to the overworld, uh, we need what is known as a memory card. This guy right here, uh, which is fairly easy to make. And then, if I'm not mistaken, we shift right click on the tunnel that's doing the sending. So that's this one here. So we're going to shift right click here. And now the configuration has been you know, copied to the memory card. And then we're going to right click over here. And now those two are linked. Now, by default, you'll notice in the top left, it says P2P tunnel ME. And uh, if we look in here, there are uh, you know a bunch of different P2P tunnels. The one we're after is P2P tunnel FE that can transfer power. It's a little awkward. There's no recipe for this. I don't know why they chose to do it this way. Uh, but the way that you actually set a P2P tunnel, um, at least to FE, is by right-clicking it with an energy conduit, like so. And you'll see now it says P2P tunnel FE uh, in the top corner there. And again, if we do slash home and... The same thing over here. We right-click that with an energy conduit. Uh, what we should see is a big old drop in power. And that big old drop in power there is this guy pulling in kind of his default buffer. You'll see that is now full of power. You'll see he's got a million there in the top left. Uh, and that was why it kind of took a big dip. Uh, but what we should see going forward is kind of a negative 660 uh, RF per tick change, right? Because now this is passively using 660. Um, now that its buffer is full. But that should work, and that should be doing what we hope it does. It should be sending power uh, from the overworld through to, uh, from the end through to the overworld. And so, yeah, uh, the benefit to this, by the way, there are a few other ways you could do this. You could use the uh, dimensional transceiver from uh, NRIO. This guy's quite expensive, but not really if you have, you know, as many Enderman heads as we do. And you can use this to transfer power uh, across dimensions. Uh, so we could have just put one of those down. Uh, the benefit of having the uh, quantum ring is that we can use our a wireless access terminal, right? If we're over in the overworld, we can actually access and craft with all of our stuff. And uh, we can also use the uh, cabling here wherever we want. So what we could also do if we wanted to now is we could, uh, instead of having energy conduits running under the floor, like we've got energy conduits are already going, you know, from the diesel generator all the way along under the floor, all the way over to here. Um, and we also have ME conduits that are running all the way under the floor, all the way over to here. Instead, what we could do is we could get rid of the energy conduits and have another P2P tunnel connected uh, to that P2P tunnel downstairs and, and then just have, you know, power come from that. So you can, uh, can kind of clean up your uh, your systems and whatnot using that as well, which is, uh, which is quite nice. And you can really connect um, as many, uh, you know, other P2P tunnels to this P2P tunnel as you like, so long as you have the memory card set to the right frequency, which in this case is uh, in the top left there, it's 0380. So yeah, I really like the P2P tunnels. Uh, they're pretty useful, and we're also going to use them at some point in the future as well to uh, allow us to kind of expand our uh, channel system as well, like to get more channels uh, that we currently have uh, have access available. And you'll see this is working right now. You'll hear the generator flickering on and off because it's bang on that 20 million. So it gets to 20 million, it shuts off. It falls below 20 million, it turns back on. And uh, you'll see that we are making enough power because now it's just flickering. And because we're making enough power, I do believe that eventually we'll, see, we'll start to see this back up. So I do think we are producing enough hemp seeds.